welcome back to my dining room. Today we're going to be talking about an essential nutrient that often gets kind of the short end of the stick. I'm talking about fats or lipids. So we know that fat is generally bad for us, but some fats are actually good for us. And we're going to talk about the difference before we make guacamole. So if we look at our lovely chart of the macronutrients, macro meaning large, meaning we need it in large quantities that are measured in grams, we see that lipids, or fat, is one of them. That means we do need it in our diet. It provides us with stored energy. It also coats the neurons in your brain. It helps make that myelin sheath so that your thoughts and actions are doing what they're supposed to do. They're not cross-wiring. They have that insulation. In fact, we kind of work like a house. Fat is surprisingly useful in your brain. Let's pretend this wall, nice and pristine, is your skull. And inside of it, it's housing the brain, which has all this electrical activity going on, transporting thoughts and ideas and actions and taking care of your entire body. There's a lot going on, so we want to protect it. If we wanted to look at our brain, let's see. <laughs> all right we could open it up and we would find all of these neurons. And just like a house has electrical activity going on inside its walls, you have electrical activity going on inside your brain. So if you could see the wires here, that would be our neurons. So it's kind of like a little tiny copper wire, but they're housed in this insulation because we don't want the wires to get crossed and then the message goes to the wrong place. So fat acts as an insulator around the neuron, just like this cord acts as an insulator around the wire. That's why you need some fat in your diet, but we want good fat, not bad fat. And I'll explain the difference. There are basically two kinds of fats. There's HDL, which is high density lipoprotein, great stuff. And then there's LDL, low density lipoproteins, not so good. The reason they're so different is that one is good for your heart and one is not good for your heart. To illustrate the difference, we're going to use this PVC pipe as a blood vessel. So if I imagine that this blood vessel is trying to transport my blood all throughout my body and back to my heart, if I have good HDL fats, let's see, it runs right through no problem. However, if I have LDL, the bad fat, it's going to kind of clog this artery, make things really hard for them to pass through so that when my blood is trying to pump, what's going to happen? Hmm. Just drips. If we look in the artery now, it's all clogged up with that LDL fat and blood is not transporting all the oxygen and nutrients that it needs to get to your entire body and keep you healthy and going. So what's a really good source of HDL, the good fats? Well, we could be making something fish-based, but I know fish is not a taste that everybody's acquired to. But something more palatable to most people is guacamole. For a really simple guacamole, you only need a couple ingredients. Three ripe avocados, the juice of a lemon, which I juiced earlier, and a little bit of salt. That's it. Actually, I'll show you the recipe a little closer. And for each avocado, we get five grams of HDL fat, the good stuff. So here's a little math for you. If each one has five grams of HDL fat, how many grams of HDL fat am I gonna have in three avocados? Five grams plus five grams is ooh, 10 grams plus five grams is 15 grams, right? All right, let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut the avocados tush off, the little bottom part. So I'm gonna say this is the top, this is the bottom. I'm just gonna cut the bottom off so it's flat. Some people do this, you don't have to, but it just makes it a little sturdier. Oh, I apologize for the camera shaking. I'm working off a really old Chromebook, y'all. All right, then making the tunnel, 
where my fingers are on the food and the knife is going between the two tunnels. Wait, between my two fingers that make a tunnel? I'm going for a train analogy here. I want it to look like a train going through a tunnel. So a car would never hit the walls of a tunnel, that'd be bad news. So we don't want our knife to touch anything near our fingers. So we're going straight down and you'll find that about, whoop, you'll find that about midway down, there's something hard in there and that's the pit. So we can't cut, we can't keep cutting straight down. So we're gonna have to rotate the avocado just a little bit. Maintaining that tunnel and just kind of rocking the knife back and forth. And then slowly I'm gonna rotate it the other way. Still rocking the knife back and forth gently. And then I'm gonna lay my knife down and I'm gonna twist the avocado open. Okay, so we have our nice avocado over here and the pit right here. So now I have to get this pit out of here and I'm gonna show you a trick. This is what I've always done. If you're not feeling confident doing this, you can always dig it out with a spoon, but this is the way I've always done it. You just kind of hack into it and the knife grabs it and pulls it right out. And you can save this and grow more avocados. The never ending fruit. Now we need to de-skin the avocado. So we don't want to eat this hard rind. So what we're going to do is chop it again. And again, doing the tunnel method. Fingers around it, knife goes straight down. Now at this point, I make a little boat like this and just gently cut through. If you're not confident with this part, definitely have an adult help you with it. You could probably even do it with a butter knife because avocados are very soft. Or in theory, your avocado should be soft when you're trying to make guacamole. <laughs> so we just want to de-skin it for each one. My avocado is not as ripe as I would like it to be, so the skin is giving me a little bit of guff on coming off. But essentially, you just don't want the rind. So do this for all your avocados and then we're gonna blend it. Okay, now that our avocados are denuded, we're gonna blend them. And I have this special little blender. It's a manual pull blender. And you can mash this up with a fork or you could use beaters or you could put them in a liquefying blender. I just like this little guy. It gives me a kick to use it. <laughs> it was free and it's fun. So I'm gonna put my avocado in there, all the bits. And I'm going to put the lemon juice at this point. So you need the juice of one lemon. Bloop. And what's the lemon good for? Well, because avocado is a fruit, and like a lot of fruits, it can become brown when exposed to oxygen, we just want to stop that from happening. We don't want it to oxidize and become brown because then it doesn't look so pretty. Not that it's going to harm the nutritional value, but people don't generally want a brown blob to eat. <laughs> All right, so the way this one works is I've screwed the lid on and then I just pull. Ooh. Shaking the camera. I forgot to add the salt. So let's do that now. We need a teaspoon of salt. So I have my teaspoon measurer, and I'm going to fill it all the way to the top like we always do. And that's how we know we got enough. Teaspoon of salt. I mean, at this point, you could really add a lot of different things if you want. You could add salsa, you could add um, garlic, you could add different seasoning spices. There's so many things you can do. We're just making a very basic one so that you get the idea. What a workout. Okay, so we're gonna taste it at this point. I got some corn chips over here. And this little guy doesn't liquefy things as much as like a blender would, but it's fun. <laughs> That's the point of doing anything, make it fun. So let's see, got my guac. Delicious, I love guacamole. I didn't use, hold on. I shouldn't talk while I'm eating.
I thought I didn't like guacamole for the longest time growing up because I always had store-bought and it just wasn't very good. But making it at home, making it your own, you can add whatever you want. It's so tasty. So I'm gonna go finish this off. And if you make some, let me know what you did. Did you make any variations? Did you add anything that I didn't add? I'd love to see what you do, as always. So get messy, make mistakes, and learn from the chaos. Bye. That are measured in grams, we see that fat is actually important. And then, oh boy, I'm supposed to pull it out. I'm not having luck here. That's okay, I have a spoon, we'll dig it out. Anyway, it works. Then there's LDL, low density. Seriously? So we, the reason that they're so different is that one, So to simplify things, we're going to pretend that this PVC pipe is a blood vessel and it's trying to get bleh. So to illustrate this, we're going to use this PVC pipe to kind of act as our arteries or our blood vessels. Woo! I got it! So fat is surprisingly useful. Bleh. Sounds like it's tinkling. <laughs> So we look, it's all clogged up. Blood cannot trans... This avocado, uh, well, but hold on. Chop that booty off. I have a little, mm. Mm. Let's, let's do that again. We did it, we nailed the opening. All right, goodbye, Mwah. see ya.